we street photographers are all works in progress, obviously in relation to our craft, but there is also this one thing that we all work really hard on, which pretty much defies human existence. That is, to be non-existent. As Omri Kadiyarvason famously puts it, approach the subject on tiptoe, even if it's a still life. Let your steps be velvet, but your eyes keen. A good fisherman does not stir up the waters before he starts to fish. Very well said. Blending in and appearing invisible are skills that are really important as a street photographer is something that all of us should aspire towards. But as far as reality goes, you do exist and you do take up space physically and so you will run into situations where you get caught for taking photos by the person who you're trying to photograph. Hello photographer, welcome back to my channel. It's Belinda and this is where we talk all about photography from inspiration to camera techniques to editing skills so that you could take better photos. Street photography for me at least goes way beyond techniques and practical steps that you can take. Rather, it goes into your mindset, your attitude, and generally how you think about your craft as a street photographer. So this video here is more on a psychological side of things. It's about how you can understand your existence as a street photographer, whereas in this video today, it's gonna be more techniques based. I'm covering a few of the most common situations that I run into as a street photographer, but if you want a more complete breakdown of the things that I do, check out my articles on my blog, which is also linked in the description box down below. So without further ado, let's dive right in. In most situations, I just walk off. By walking off, I actually mean walking away with perfect composure, without feeling self-conscious, without acting awkwardly, without seeming ashamed. And this is actually way harder to do than it seems. For me personally, I'm based in the UK. For where I am, as it currently stands, there is no law prohibiting me to photographing people in public spaces. Therefore, I feel that I don't owe anyone any explanation as to why I'm photographing in the open area. That makes me sound a little like a prick, I know, but we're talking about the absolute bottom line here. Like before we are concerned with whether or not something is nice, whether something is respectful, we are really concerned about whether or not something is legal. Apparently you want to go about your everyday life knowing that what you do is compliant with the law. Having the peace of mind knowing that people can come at you and tell you off just because they want to for taking pictures is a massive confidence boost. It gives me the assurance that I'm not doing something inherently wrong, at least not from a legal standpoint, which really takes away all the small thoughts and a lot of the anxiety that could possibly distract me when I'm trying to take a photo. I think that understanding your rights is a really important step to putting yourself in this correct mindset when you're shooting on streets. I usually do this when I get caught for a frame that I'm not that excited about myself. So perhaps I was warming up for the day, perhaps I was trying out some new concept that I just wasn't so sure about. For these shots, I'm not likely to work hard for them anyway. I'm not likely to spend a lot of time waiting for the right moment, to spend a lot of effort trying to recompose the frame, even if I didn't get caught. So for a situation like these, I simply just walk away as if nothing has happened. So as a result, people seldom go out of their way to tell me off seeing that I was leaving as well. So this I feel is the optimal solution for shots that you're not really passionate about, both for yourself as a photographer and for the person who you were photographing or were about to photograph. Now of course do check out what the laws and regulations are like in your locality, I'm just speaking in general. The freedom to photograph might not apply identically across all regions, so definitely take your time and do your own research. Another type of response that I do when I get caught is to simply ignore and pretend that I wasn't taking a photo of that person specifically. I would just hold my camera up because I shoot on a DSLR. I would just hold my camera at eye level until he walks off and perhaps take a few more shots because honestly it wouldn't harm. This is usually the case when I think that I found a composition that's worth the wait but then the subject matter isn't quite there yet. So for instance, I might have noticed a really nice shape, either as a light or as a shadow, and then I need someone to be in the frame to give life to this frame. Or say I like how things are arranged in a scene, I like how the geometry is like, but then it's lacking some people to interact with the geometry. Or perhaps I foresee that there will be an interesting action taking place, but then the action isn't quite there yet. Either way, it is a situation which I think I've identified potentially quite a promising shot, but then I just need some more time to wait for the right person to step into the frame. But to be honest, I do this so much that it's pretty much 
Now, my usual practice, regardless of whether or not I found the frame promising. If you think about it, and especially if you put yourself in the shoes of the person who's being photographed, it makes so much sense. Imagine for a moment that you are on the other side. You are the person who's being photographed and you've caught the photographer pointing their camera at you. Now, at the first instance, you would perhaps feel a bit irritated or a bit shocked if you don't want your photo taken. But then after a few seconds, you realize that they aren't moving. They aren't responding to you. So if that's the case, what will you do? You'll probably just walk off. Because firstly, you're not sure what exactly they're photographing. They could be photographing you. They could be photographing the entire crowd. They could be photographing someone behind you. You have no idea. But more importantly, you are a busy person. We all like to think that we are busy, so it wouldn't really make sense for you to get into an argument or an awkward conversation to the very least for a photograph that you are not even sure actually exists. Now, let's change the scenario slightly. Imagine that when you stared at the photographer, they actually retreated and put down a camera, acted sneakishly, and was about to walk away. Now, all of a sudden, it seems that you have a much stronger reason as to why you would wanna confront them and ask them, hey, what's going on? Why are you taking my photo? So now you would see that it really boils down to the photographer's confidence and the way they carry themselves. It's that self-consciousness that bothers people. It's not exactly the camera. If you think that it's gonna be a stretch for you to act normal and to completely you know, ignore what's happening in between the shots while you're waiting, knowing that someone is noticing you, Simply just hold up the camera and pretend that they're not there. This is what I find to be the least provocative response to someone staring at you. Another thing that I do fairly often as well is to ask the person for their photograph, which you might have already noticed from my point of view videos. Now, this applies in situations where I think the person isn't actually adverse towards having their photograph taken. They're looking at me because they're more intrigued and curious than irritated at what I'm doing. So in other words, I am actually a pleasant presence. And while this sounds pretty incredible, it does happen more often than you think. Of course, I only do this if I also think that the person would make an interesting portrait, most likely because of something that they're wearing, um, their attire, something they're holding, or something that they're doing, so the context that they're in. If I don't think that I want to have their portrait, then I'd simply smile, say thank you, and leave. The moment that they saw me, I would just spread my arms and say, hey, hello, uh, can I have your portrait? I like your outfit. Or just insert whatever reason that you deem appropriate. It doesn't have to be anything sophisticated. And so they would be like, oh yeah, sure. And then I would guide them towards a background that I think would work the best with their outfit or whatever works best in a given circumstances. And then after taking the image, I would thank them for it. Sometimes I would offer, depending on the situation, I would offer to email them the shot. Sometimes they would actually jump in and say, oh, you know what, I want that shot. And then we'd exchange emails, make some small talk, and I'd probably thank them again, and then we'd walk off and go on with our dates. It's really intuitive, just follow social norms and you'll be fine. This is probably gonna be easier for you if you also take portraits, it's just gonna come as natural to you. But either way, I think that taking portraits on streets is a good skill to have because if you're able to make good portraits in a situation where you don't have much control over the surroundings, you will be able to do portraits in a more proper situation, say in a studio or in a planned out shoot. Essentially, you're training your ability to take environmental portraits. Moving on, let's look at the absolute worst case scenario where you're told to show the images and potentially delete them. I'm not necessarily saying that they have the right to do so, but if a situation like this happens, most of the time, out of respect, I just show them what I've shot and if they insist on me deleting them, I just delete them. This is a rather tricky situation to handle, but this is how I see it. Technically, you can't go about on streets asking to see what's on another person's phone because it's their phone, it's their camera. But sometimes people can be difficult, they can be very self-important, and therefore in the unlikely event of this happening, I would simply just comply with the demands, it's quite unlikely that the shot is so good that I can't afford to delete it. This doesn't really happen that much at all, but when it does, I don't have an issue with deleting my shots when I'm asked to because I know that I'm not legally obliged to delete them. I'm just deleting out of respect. Technically, you could stand your ground as a photographer. I just chose not to. Facing confrontation and being questioned, being caught, really is nothing new in the world of street photography and so everyone would have their own ways of dealing with it. I made this video to share how I personally react to situations like these 
But do let me know what you do in the comments down below. For now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!